problem you're going to see is people are going to be complaining about incompatible programs. They got this ancient, ancient program that they just have to have, have to run. They don't want to get rid of it. They love it to death. And I'm like that too. I got tons of old programs. I got good old WSFTP 95. It runs. It runs under Vista. Uh, it, it works perfectly fine. Uh -oh. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh oh's right. Because it's it's old, I should upgrade it. But uh it works, so why bother? Uh sure it might have a little, couple of security things in, but it works. Now right here, let me let me do that again in case you missed it. <clears throat> if you got a program that you have to have doesn't seem to run under Vista. You install it, it gives you an error message. Um, messages about resource not found, uh, cannot read file, um, or just some incredibly vague error that doesn't make a darn lick of sense. Go ahead and try running in compatibility mode. A lot of people don't know about this for some reason. I'm, I'm surprised at this. You can actually run programs in what's called compatibility mode as if they were you know, in XP or 95, 98, uh, it's it's real easy to do too. So to do that, just right click on the program, shortcut to the program. In this case, we'll pick on WSFTP. We go to Properties, and you have the Compatibility tab. Click on that, and what you'll see here is Compatibility mode, various settings. Most of these settings here. You should never touch those here, these settings here. This is for like the old DOS programs, really. If you have a DOS program, you're going to try and run it. This is the kind of stuff you're probably going to have to check uh, to get those to run. But if you got a program that was designed for, let's say, a 95, you check this box here, run in compatibility mode, and you can select any of the operating systems that are older and it'll run it as if it was Windows 95 that launched it, ME 98, it's like why bother with 95, just try running Windows 98 um, in XP, you know the program works under XP try it under XP Service Pack 2 apply it, ok it you just open it up and it should work now, if that still still doesn't work for you, go back in there, Properties, Compatibility. A lot of times, this is another thing that throws people off. In Vista, if you are logged in as an administrator, you're not an administrator all the time. This is the same thing on Mac OS. You don't see people complaining about this on Mac OS, um, but you do do see people complaining about this with Vista for some reason. I, I don't quite understand why. It's a good security feature actually. Um, when you're in Vista, you're actually running two different profiles. You got your account that has just standard permissions, you know your administrator. And then you have your other account, same user profile, but it has the administrator authority just sitting in the background waiting for you to need it. Uh, same thing with Macintosh. So when you go and open up a program, <clears throat> sometimes you'll get that little user access control that tells you to continue, asks you if you want to continue. And that's a system change that's happening or something that needs administrator approval. So if you're connected to a domain, it'll ask you for the password. Um, if your password for some reason is different from what you logged in with, it'll it'll ask you for that too. Um, but the same thing happens with the programs. They don't all run as administrator. You actually have to tell them to run as administrator. And older programs don't know how to tell Vista, hey, I need to be notified to do an administrative task. I need access to Windows System Directory. So you check this box here. Run this program as an administrator. And that'll give you that authority. 
as soon as you open up, it'll be running as administrator. Now, I have seen that that checkbox does have sometimes a negative effect. Let's see if uh, we're going to have a fit here, and we didn't. Um, I have seen some programs actually react negatively to that administrator setting, and those programs just flat out don't work with Vista, actually. Um, they're just so old, so poorly programmed in some respects that they just don't run. But as you see, I double click it. I don't know if Cam Studio is going to pick this up, but I got the user account control window here. This is just saying, hey, I marked this being administrator, but I really have to allow this thing. I want to be sure that I'm sure. Hit the allow, it does it, it runs it. Because that allow is saying, okay, go ahead and run it with administrative authority. So let me change my settings back uh, before I forget about it. Because <clears throat> I don't need them for that program. It works fine. So that's, that's one thing I see quite often. People do have the older programs. They want to use them, but they just can't get them to run because that simple checkbox. Checkbox fixes a lot of problems. So, moving right along to our next item here. The Windows Anytime Activation. And you're going, what, what's, what's the problem with this? What, what, what could possibly go wrong with that? What, what is Windows Anytime Activation actually is a better place to start. Um, <clears throat> the Windows Anytime Ac Upgrade I think I said activation for it's, it's upgrade. Windows Anytime Upgrade. It's a feature where you can go from Home Basic to Home Premium or Business or Ultimate. Uh, take Home Premium to Ultimate version or whatever. It's basically Microsoft's way of making some more some more money off you. Um, when you buy a system, like I said before, you could get something that has Basic on it. And you go, well, if I had Home Premium, I could get this really cool Aero interface that you get this really cool flip 3d you know do that uh, flip 3d is pretty cool I wouldn't considering a major selling point um, but having the arrow interface it's going to help with processing time you can tell really easy with a basic system home premium just clicking the start button it takes a little bit longer <clears throat> not much just a little bit um, but yeah that's the whole thing with the Anytime Upgrade is let you upgrade to another version of Windows without going out and buying the home premium disk. There's one critical flaw here, and this one is, I can honestly say, is part Microsoft's fault. It is partly their fault. They could have done this better, I think. If you click your Start button, and you go right-click on Computer, Properties, You'll see your Windows version right there. Home Premium right here. Wondering why I'm not running business version. There really isn't no need. We don't have a domain here. We do a lot of this stuff through the web, but that's something else. Uh, you got this upgrade button here. You click that. It goes through. You can compare the versions. See all this great fun stuff. See what all you're getting with Ultimate. Don't you just want to get Ultimate? and here's where they kind of fail well I want to go to business version I don't, I don't need ultimate I want to go to business there's no choice choose ultimate I mean it, you're not choosing you're, you're taking it and then you know gives you the steps here you know first purchase the Windows Vista upgrade online begin the process it will only take one to two minutes to download one to two minutes to download uh, that's probably just a little flag, you know, it just, you know, activates, you know, the better version of Ultimate, something like that. Obviously, you just kind of built it all together, right? That's what you'd think. And then, you know, it tells you additional steps to then upgrade Windows Vista. What, what, what is this about? Follow instructions on the screen to complete the upgrade. You'll need a Windows Anytime Upgrade Disk. Hmm, what's that? This disk may have came with your computer, or you may have purchased it when 